Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. If you're new here, my name is Molly. I'm a voice coach, accent coach, and breathwork facilitator based in London. And today I want to engage in what I think is a really interesting and enlightening discussion surrounding the intricacies that exist between voice and accent and why I don't believe you can work on one without the other, despite what many of you may think, or many of my first consultations seem to be centered around. So today I wanted to break down three big headings as to why I don't believe the two should be or could be separated. And thank you for joining me. If you have, make a cup of tea, make yourself comfortable, and let's crack on with the conversation. So in order to start off this conversation, I think it's important to acknowledge the socio-cultural impact that one's accent and voice has. Ultimately, we are pack animals as human beings. We want to fit into our environment and we learn and develop the art of oracy through what we are listening to and what we mimic as we go through our developmental years. Our accents serve as a carrier of that cultural identity. It reflects the rich tapestries of the language that our family or we use day to day, but as well as the languages of our ancestors and your ancestors before you. Everything you are interacting interacting with at any point in your life is impacting your voice, your accent, your identity, whether you are aware of it or not. So when you're working on a journey of exploring your accent further, of exploring your voice further, it's something that I see as very much intertwined with what it is to communicate. And so if we're basing the idea or we're going back to the root of what is accent, what is language, what is voice, as being part of that socio contextual, cultural part of our language, the two cannot be separated for you as a unique individual. A lot of the time I get people coming to me asking me, you know, I think there's something wrong with this or I want to sound more like this. And the issue with that is when you're trying to sound like something else that's totally detached from your body, such as, I want to sound like Obama because Obama is a fantastic speaker, it's it's actually a really complicated thing you're asking because you're asking yourself to strip away all of your years of what you understand communication and voice and accent to be from what you have found has to have worked for you in getting across your own expression and you're asking yourself and your body to just forget all that and just to pretend you are someone else and someone else's way of expressing it so instead you kind of need to break down okay what is it about obama's voice that i really like and is there a way that i can try to implement the process in which he uh addresses a crowd, the process in which he slows down his speech when talking about X, Y, Z, that I can inhabit or I can practice more in my day-to-day -day speech and accent. Accent is not just about pronouncing the words. It carries a cultural and social context behind it and of the language that we speak. By working on your accent or your voice, you are totally tapping into a wider cultural narrative. Let's now put that to one side. So that's our literature or a philosophy, if you like. And let's think about the science. Let's think genuinely about the anatomy of this. And let me explain to you why anatomically we also cannot separate accent from voice. Now, voice is literally my vocal folds reacting to air pressure coming through. It starts with the brain sending a signal to the diaphragm saying, hey, I've got something to say. And the voice starts to flow through. When it then comes to accent, Usually we're talking about how we then shape the air that's coming through those vocal folds. So maybe it's through the lips, the tongue, the soft palate. But a lot of the ways we're shaping it, unless you've refined and really explored this art for years and years and years and years and years, is a subconscious habit. You might subconsciously be lifting the soft palate in reaction to that airflow, or you might be subconsciously widening your tongue on certain vowel sounds. And so just how your breath or your impulse to speak will then affect your voice, which will then affect your accent, it's not like there's this clear cut between your voice stops here and your accent starts here. The shape of your mouth not just affects whether you're saying a word as such as bath, as bath or bath, but it's also affecting your pitch, your tone, the air quality, and your voice that goes along with that shape. And the third aspect I wanted to talk about, which kind of comes into this conversation of how 
and why I think people confuse voice and accent so often is that when we're listening to people's voices, we often can't name the thing we're listening to, which means that, oh, I don't know why this voice is grating on me, or I don't know why this voice feels like this when I listen to it, or I don't even know why I love this voice so much. And we often mistake accent for voice like a lot of people will say oh i hate this accent whereas actually it's probably just the register in which that person spoke to you that you found quite hard or maybe it was the directness in which they spoke to you in which you found quite off-putting and i will also put as a caveat to this remember that people often have those reactions just because they're unfamiliar to those voices and accents not because the voices and the accents are inherently bad or in any way shape need changing but putting that to one side for a second, when we're listening to voice and accent, because there's not that clear cut distinguish either socially, culturally, or anatomically, then I think it makes us believe like, oh, I constantly get people talking about my accent in this way or talking about my voice in this way, therefore this needs to change, which really isn't the case. And I really encourage you to try to question yourself the next time you're judging someone's voice and or accent and really question yourself as to what specifically is it about that voice that had that reaction in your body? Was it how they said it? Was it their tone? Or was it just triggering to you to hear someone speak to you in a certain way? Was it actually something to do with the sound in which you heard and the delivery? Or was it maybe something that you just weren't used to? Maybe it was both, but to conclude, the relationship between voice and accent is something that I really think is very complicated, very nuanced for each individual person and can't quite be separated. And so when you are looking at voice work, accent work, whatever it may be, that's a massive reason as to why I have a master's in voice and accent coaching. The two cannot be separated and therefore the two have to be worked on simultaneously when you are on a journey of discovering more and exploring more about your communication in whatever form that may be. I hope you found today's video somewhat intriguing or thought provoking. If you have, I'd love to know your thoughts down below and you can check out any of my free consultation links in the description also. Thank you so much for watching this far. I hope you have a lovely rest of your week and I'll see you next time. Bye.